on Western World One Community. Hey, check it out. I know today's 24th, but I'm going to have to go back and read this from uh, Wednesday on the 23rd. Um, I wanted to know, like, what uh, what is it, the wanton and uh, endangerment, what that really means in this case. So I'm going to press play and see if this um, will explain a little bit. If not, we just have to just read it. See if it goes through. Yeah, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me. I follow back. And um, on Facebook, uh, request me. I request back. Um, if not, just hit the fan page. Uh, Western World One on all platforms. So I don't think it's gonna play. But anyway, um, if it does play, cool. But yeah, I was I was sitting up here reading this, man. I was like, okay, well, what is it that you know when you look at something like um, I was looking at the um, what is it the f it was something called like a felony something case or whatever I was looking at that like if um, you know somebody go commit a crime and the person that shoots someone um, and the the shooter shoots somebody and let's say the shooter got shot and he and he got killed in the process and I was there and now they charging me for both of the murders uh, which is considered foreseeable right and so I was like okay well that's you know that's like for us you know saying something like that so when I started trying to go into looking at um with the police situation, right? Because, you know, their laws, you know, the law is the law, but, you know, they enforce the laws and uh, some laws, uh, it kind of bends the rules for them a little bit. Or, it, it, or according to, I'll just say, it, it, I'm not going to say bend the rules, but it's ways around uh, this situation, right? That's what I want to say. Okay, still not playing. So here it says, um, a Kentucky grand jury indicted one of the officers on uh, wanton endangerment charges in Breonna Taylor's case. The grand jury announcement on Wednesday that Officer Brett um, Hankinson was charged with three counts of wanton endangerment in connection to the police raid on the night of March 13th. According to Kentucky law, a person is guilty of wanton endangerment in the first degree when, under circumstances manifesting extreme indifference to value of, of human life, he wantonly engages in conduct which creates a substantial danger of death or serious physical injury to another person. The word wanton itself is defined by, uh, what's that, Merriam-Webster as merciless and inhumane being without check or limitation. Right. Wanton endangerment in the first degree is a class D felony. If convicted, each charge holds a possible sentence up to five years. Taylor. An emergency medical worker was shot multiple times by officers who entered her home using a no-knock warrant during a narcotics investigation. Then they said that they turned around and ruled and said that the officers did identify themselves. So they trying to rule that no-knock out of there. All right. The warrant used to search her home was connected to a suspect who did not live there and no drugs was found inside. The use of no-knock warrants has since been banned by Louisville's Metro Council. Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, opened fire when police burst in, hitting officers Jonathan Mattingly. Uh, Walker was charged with attempt murder of a police officer, but prosecutors later dropped their charge. Walker told the police he heard knocking but didn't know who was coming into the home and fired in self-defense. At a news conference, State Attorney General Daniel Cameron said Hankerson 
and the two other officers were entered Taylor's apartment. I'm sorry, who entered Taylor's apartment, announced themselves before entering the apartment and did not use a no knock warrant. So that's what he said. And he ruled it out. All right. Uh, Cameron said Mattingly returned six shots at the same time. Officer Miles Cosgrove fired 16 times. And, you know, when they when they fired six shots and 16 shots, they 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 use that um, when you fire and you use a whole round. You, 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 they using that fear. They was fearing for their life tactic. You know, they going under that. I was fear for my life. I don't know what that was or whatever. So it kind of rules out, you know, versus if you shoot one time or shoot two times, then you know, you know what you're pretty much doing. Indeed, and this is my personal opinion, okay? Uh, so I'm saying allegedly, all right? Breonna Taylor was struck six times, one shot fatal, Cameron said. According to Kentucky law, the use of force by officers Manley and Cosgrove was justified to protect themselves. Now, you see, that's where the justifier comes in. At. They say they were justified to protect themselves. That's something crazy. This justification bars us from pursuing criminal charges in Ms. Brianna's death. Wow. Cameron said Hankerson fired his weapon 10 times, including from an outside sliding glass door and through a bedroom window. Some of the bullets traveled through Taylor's apartment into a neighboring apartment. At the time, three residents were at home in the other apartment. Cameron said, including a man, a pregnant woman, and a child. Wow. There is no conclusive evidence, Cameron said, that any bullets fired from Hankinson hit Taylor. Mm. Hankinson was fired from the city police department on June 23rd. A termination letter sent to him by uh, interim Louisville Police Chief Robert Schroeder said the white officer had violated procedures by showing extreme indifference to the what's it to the value of the human life when he wantonly and blindly shot ten rounds uh, I'm sorry shot ten rounds of gunfire into Taylor's apartment uh, in March. All right, and you and you guys can kind of read on. I'm um, a little bit on it. No, as a matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, man. Hankerson, Madeline Cosgrove, and the detectives who sought the warrant, Joshua James, were placed on administrative leave, <laughs> reassigning after the shooting. During this special report, ABC's chief legal analyst Dan Abrams broke down father a uh, wanton entanglement charge. You can see by the charges, I'm sorry, you can see by the charge here, which wanton endangerment, which is not reckless homicide. The reason I'm comparing it to reckless homicide is because in both cases, you're basically talking about the same legal standards that someone fired recklessly, uh, wantonly. Wantonly. Man, when I say that word, wantonly, it sounds like I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> and in the cases of homicide, the victim would have been Breonna Taylor. Um, Brianna, Brianna, I'm sorry. Um, where we at? Uh, here the grand jury is saying the victims that were charging for is the neighbors, Abram said. Uh, wow, so they charged for the neighbors. I um, in this case, uh, they, you know, I guess they're trying to go for manslaughter, or you know, and and. and with manslaughter, you already know if, um, basically, an example is if a fly is on the wall, I have a gun, I'm in my apartment, I see the fly, and I shoot, and it strikes into a, um, a neighbor's home or a neighbor's apartment, and it strikes them, um, you know, that's considered manslaughter. Uh, I don't know if it's one, two, or three, the degree of it. Okay, um, I'm sorry, Avery said, okay. That the grand jury believed, regardless whether it was a warrant that should 
have been executed, police had a legal right to be there. And when they were fired upon, they responded. That is the legal explanation for why there is no charge of homicide, because it seems clear the grand jurors did not believe that they acted beyond the scope of the warrant, except for Hankinson firing that weapon, Abram said. So this is kind of twisted to me a little bit, right? So when if they said that they knocked on the door and basically in this situation, saying that they knocked on the door and the husband, I mean, with a boyfriend started shooting. Now, if somebody knocking on my door late at night, I'm not about to shoot. And then if they also announce themselves as the police, I'm definitely not about, I'm not about to shoot, right? So in this situation to me, man, it's just like, okay, if, if they came in with a no-knock warrant, they just came in, bust in, boom, then automatically I'm going for a gun. And I'm about to shoot because I'm thinking y'all trying to break into my crib. And, you know, that's what it really sounds like more so to me than it does um they announced themselves police open up you automatically if you got something or doing something you automatically looking like oh man let me let me stash this or you know as you see in the movies oh man let me let me put this up or oh man let me do this or if you know that you know you waking up and you start that late at night or whatever time it, whatever time it was i don't know and all this stuff is alleged um you automatically you know the police say open the door you're gonna go for the door you're not gonna take your gun with you you gonna go for the door. And in this situation, if somebody busts into my house and I start firing, and then I shot the first, you know, I shot the first person, boom, and then everybody just started unloading their clip. How are they acting in defense when y'all broke into my house, basically? And all this stuff is alleged. I don't know, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm sorry that was a little bit more lengthy uh, with this situation here. But I want to know y'all thoughts, all right? Let's go.